Well, hello again, everyone. This time we are at Queen's Wharf, or actually at Nobby's Beach, actually. And we're just going to be targeting some just standard bread and butter species like brim and stuff. We've just got the two and a half inch slim swim on my Daiwa Shiro with eight pound braid. And then I've got my Daiwa Crossfire, which is just paired up with a Shimano Sienna. It's both about seven foot rods. And it's, this one's got a sinker actually. So we are targeting bait. So I've got one rod for lures, one rod for bait. So hopefully we get mixed species, but I'm just thinking that, you know, with the temperature at the moment, we'll probably just get a few more fish on the bait rather than the lures. But we'll see you on the walk there. Forgot to mention as well, I will be walking all the way from Novi's all the way to the Queen's Wharf, just around down there. And I'm just going to be flicking all these soft blackies. I'm debating whether I should bring a net. Um, I will be fishing from rocks and from the jetty. You know, I should be fine. Stuff the net. I don't need it. Oh, that could have been bad for the rod. I won't set up any bait rods yet. I'll just stick with this slim swim. So you can see it is a very nice looking two and a half inch slim swim. It's on a one six jig head. I'm just going to experiment whether it's too light or too heavy, which I'll try to get to the end of this wall near the bottom. This probably won't cast too far. I am fighting against that westerly wind, the winter westerlies. But just hopefully it sinks just enough to hit the bottom. It is the middle of winter at the moment, so the fish are expecting to buy a bit slower and just in the deeper water. So it would be good to get a kayak or some sort of little tinny out. But just for you land-based fishos, this video is um, sort of a, a check whether um, you can use this lures that I'm using and you can still get some nice fish. So I think what we'll do is probably just do about five to 10 casts and just keep walking up and take probably around about 30 meters. So the next spot I'll probably go is just around that bush. Just go for a little flick. Parkour at the top. Oh. So I'll show you the highlights and um, a few little casts just at every single spot. That was a all right cast. There's a huge drop off if that rock is actually stable. There is a very nice drop off right up here and there's a bit of a pipeline. So maybe there might be a fish sitting around here, but I think my best shot of actually getting some brim would definitely be around those little pylons or just jetties and stuff. So there's one little bit of structure right up here. We might go for a couple more flicks at. And then we've got the, obviously the big structure up there with the Queen's Wharf where um, people do get jewies and other stuff. Probably more, probably more hair tail than anything I've seen. But we're not going for hair tail. We're just going for like brim, flatties. And that, that's really about it. You will see that the colors I've chosen, I've decided to pick the motor oil color. It's just a bit more natural to the area. And the water's pretty dirty as well. So I don't really want to choose something so bright like a pink or even something so white. I'd rather just pick something a bit more natural. So this is just basically a three to five kilo rod. It's probably one of my lighter ones that aren't actually broken. Um, and I do just have like a size one, just a suicide hook. And this is probably a like oh, size zero, maybe double zero bore sinker. And it's just going to be, well, I wanted to go weightless actually, but I decided to go with a little bit of weight, just trying to see whether the current's too strong or whether this will sink fast enough. I don't want to pick up butter brim and all those pest species. So that's sort of the thinking of the sinker with a little bit of a suicide hook. I bet this jetty would hold some really nice brim just around the bottom up there. I don't have any burly on me. Uh, the drop's all right. Hmm. I am liking the structure here with a nice bit of shade. Now I'm just going to make sure I don't snag. Plate safe first, just drop it under that little white piece there. Hopefully there's a couple brim. That's a good cast right under. It's 
you can see we've got the Queen's Wharf just right up there. We've come all the way from that side of the car park. So far, no luck on anything. But I'm persistent, you know. I think we'll get some fish. I think we'll get a hit or two. And this time, I am staying right up here instead of just walking right down. I probably should uh, if I get a fish, but I will stay up here just for convenience. And um, I mean, it actually doesn't look that bad. It looks like I could actually just jump over and walk in. But I really just want to walk straight up there and just have a few little brief casts, but mainly just prioritize bait fishing. We've reached the destination of Queen's Wharf. We've actually got a restaurant running at the moment, which is pretty normal at this time of day. There's the two setups. There's the water we're gonna cast into. And let me show you what bait we're using. But right, we do have some pre-packed yakis. I have cut these up back at home. We'll be using chunks of yakis as bait over here. As it is the natural bait, you will get yakis here every now and then. Uh, you'll often catch herring if you're using bait jigs but you will get yuckers, um, so like stuff like that, you know, that's just a piece of tail from the last trip. They will be really good for bait. Now you can see I have just cut up this yucca. Well, there's not much of the tail, but I don't want to give them too much. We'll be using bait, sort of this size. And we'll just lob it out on one of these smaller rods. Something like that, you know? Plenty of hook exposure, especially this is a pretty tough bait. So I might just stick with using bait for a bit. See how it goes down there. And for the first five or so minutes, I might actually just focus on the bait rod. That is the one that's probably going to get hit first. Uh, the lure one might need to wait. Now I think realistically, the brim should be hanging around that corner there if people are throwing their rubbish away. So I will give a little flick up here. Realistically, there should be brim because there are there are people eating there. So surely, if there's like a chip thrown in the water, we'll see if it's smashed by a brim or bird. But there should be a brim in there. With only a few nibbles, I decided that it might be time to change to a bait keeper hook. There wasn't any need to change bait except change my running sinker rig to a Paternoster rig. first lower change I will put the slim swim back just with its original package so I decided to switch to a Daiwa Bay Junkie 2.5 inch grub with my size 216 jig head. now let's get a little bit of scent or well, let's actually dry it up anyways don't think that will do anything anyways Let's get this as close as we can to under there. Mm. Can be closer. That was shocking. That's better. Okay, now let's see if we're gonna get a brim. So after a tough day at the Queen's Wharf, I had a few flicks on the way back. However, I was unable to harvest a bite. And after a few quick chats with a local fisherman, I think it's time to pack up. I think um, this actually just shows that flicking for flatties and brim probably doesn't work really well in winter. So you might have to uh, work when the water gets warmer and just fish the tides. That's probably the most important part rather than just uh, go out in the middle of the day on the middle of the tide. No, I'm actually at the top of the tide, so it's just as quiet. But uh, anyways, if you like these sort of type of videos or have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. But other than that, see you guys in the next episode.